boss was like, I'll do your job. Well, not that. I won't do that though. <laughs>What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Hidden Oaks Homestead. When we first got out here, we knew we wanted all this livestock, but before we got the livestock, we knew that we needed something to protect the livestock because we are out in the middle of the woods. We got coyotes, we, we've got bobcats, we've got all kinds of predators out here. So we knew that before we got started, we needed to get somebody out here to protect these animals really chipped at most of that research on there that's all him he can take credit for yeah, this I'm a dog lover <laughs> he's a dog lover and he looked into what is going to be the best options for here for protection of our livestock so we came up really he came up and talked me into it basically Anatolians and Great Pyrenees seem to be the best choice for us and we're gonna walk you through how we got here how we decided on those breeds and why we ended up with that. And why you need them as well. Mm -hmm. Raska, you supervising? Huh? When we moved back here to Florida, we brought dogs with us from the Middle East that we shipped back with us. Those were pets they're not really made to do anything around the farm they're not really guard dogs so we needed to look at who's gonna do the work on the farm yeah the dogs that we brought back with us they're not livestock guardian dogs they're not guard dogs at all and they're pets and uh, a, a lot of people don't realize that these livestock guardian dogs have have been bred specifically with the livestock guardian mentality in mind and it's just built in to who they, they are and, and that's just how they're hardwired is to bond with their livestock and protect them at, at all costs so uh, you can you can't just use any dog to be a livestock guardian a lot of people think oh you got to go to a rescue you got to get a rescue dog and that's great we're as far as pets go, we fully support. We have two rescue dogs, three rescue, three, three rescue three dogs, rescue dogs. <laughs> and we love rescue dogs. But if you need a livestock guardian, you can't put that job on a rescue or a mixed breed dog. Uh, these all the training in the world is not going to change what they what the breeds are bred for. Yeah, these these dogs, these Anatolians and Great Pyrenees, yeah. it's, it's not something that they have to be trained to do. It's just it's in their DNA that when you put them out with the animals, that's just what they want to do. They, our, our livestock guardian dogs, they enjoy us as well, but they want to be with those livestock. They want to be with the cows. They want to be with the goats because that's their family to yeah. them. They don't look at us really as family. They enjoy us and they're happy when we come out because they know they're going to eat, but their family are the goats and the donkeys and the cows wow. and that's who they're hardwired to be with yeah. uh, we have put our our pets in our pets love to go out into the pasture with us and whenever we leave they go to the gate if we leave them in they're gonna sit at the gate and cry because they don't want to be in there they don't know what to do but they, they get bullied but these <laughs> anatolians and the the great pyrenees that we have they don't want to leave that area. Mm -hmm. They want to be in there. And if we try to take them out, they're going to find their way to get back in there with their family that they're, they've been raised with and that they want to protect. Yeah. Now that's not to say they don't need any training. They are bred for that purpose, but you still need to supervise them, especially during puppy stage. You still got to teach them this is a no and this is a go. They still need to be taught that and they need that imprint with the livestock. So you wanna make sure you get them young so that they know who they need to protect. If you were to come over to our farm and visit us and see these livestock guardian dogs in action, you would think they're completely worthless. <laughs> they sleep all they day. sleep all day long <laughs> you would think these dogs aren't doing anything but uh just more mouths to feed yeah. and the reason that is is because during the day uh the 
predator threat that is really non-existent pretty minimal and they know that so they lay around all day long and they chill and they relax and we love to get that on camera mm -hmm. and we love to make fun of them <laughs> for always being laying around sleeping and uh, the reason they do that is because the predator threat is so small during the day and they know that uh, they work the graveyard shift yeah as as the sun settles and the predators start coming out especially when it's a bright moon night Full moon nights are very active around here. The coyotes are out starting yes. as soon as the sun goes beyond the horizon just a little bit, they are out. And we hear them howling out in the distance and then as soon as that starts, it starts in here, the barking and the howling and it's a, a concert of beautiful yeah. voices. So the way that, uh, that our guardians do it and Piper's showing off for you right now. <laughs> the way they do it is more through deterrence than act, they're not out actually hunting predators. Right. Uh, that might be a misconception that these guys are out all night hunting coyotes or hunting bobcats, and that's not what they do. They hang out with the animals, and if there's a threat, they're immediately alerted and then they're on the fence line uh barking at, at whatever the threat is yep. to try and that's their that's their biggest line of defense is their bark uh they they make it so that whatever the predator is is like that's not an easy target i don't even want to go over right. There. right piper <laughs> We, we got them right here with us. I guess she feels like she needs she needs, she needs to, to show off to show off her skills. Uh, so yeah, but that's that's her primary uh, line of defense mm -hmm. is, is meeting them at the fence line and barking and just telling them, hey, uh, whatever you think you want to get out of this place is not going to be an easy task yeah. for you. Don't, don't come close. We're we're here and we're going to protect. Uh, another way with our male Roscoe is he is constantly marking everything out here so that they before they even get close they can smell that hey there's signature there's a signature here yeah. there's a resistance it's not going to be an easy day for them because these coyotes they want to go after small game they want they don't want to fight for their food they want to grab something quick yeah. and easy and they're not looking to fight and they're not going to want to fight these animals no <laughs> So while the Anatolian and the Great Pyrenees work out great for us, they are not great for everybody. They do have some downsides to them. First of all, I can't stress it enough that these animals, these dogs are not pets. They are not going to work in a, a, an a, apartment an, setting. An apartment setting. A, or a, even a subdivision a setting. A subdivision. They are going to bark and they're going to bark at everything, especially when the sun goes down. Your neighbors are going to hate you. Your neighbors will hate you if there is a, a somebody walking uh, down the sidewalk at 7 p.m. They're going to freak out. They're going to lose it because they that is their instinct that once the sun goes down, everything is a threat mm -hmm. and they need to meet that threat with barking. So it's not gonna work. Uh, small property, they're probably gonna get destructive if they don't have room they need, to roam. Yeah, they need room to roam. We have a uh, three acre pasture that they stay on, but they're okay staying on that three acres because they have, their job is inside that three acres. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they need to be contained. They, they do like to roam. When we first had Roscoe, when Roscoe was our only dog and he was young, once his hormones kicked in, he was gone. We did videos about having to build the fence, the pasture earlier than we wanted to, just because we had to find a way to contain Roscoe. Uh, he was not good for us out here as a, a free range dog, I guess, where we just left him on the front porch to his own devices. He would get bored and he would stray and we would have uh, the president of the hunting club calling us complaining <laughs> because he was interfering with people's food plots. Right. And that, that was a big issue and that was why we built the pasture, but then also besides just the pasture and the fence itself, we gave him more work to do because yes. back then we really only had chickens and then once we started adding more livestock, he had something to do. He had yes. something to be more bonded to. And then we added another livestock guardian dog to the mix as well, which again added to his job in kind of mentoring her along 
the ways of how work is supposed to go. So yes. that, that all helped. So it's really containment, yes, but it needs to be big enough for them to be able to roam and they need to have a job. They need yeah. to have something to be bonded to. And since, since they're so independent and they're very hands-off as far as uh, people are concerned, they're more focused on the livestock that they're trying to protect, uh, it makes them, they're very independent and almost stubborn. <laughs> yeah. they, they'll <laughs> listen to you when they want to listen to you. Yeah. You're not going to train these guys like German Shepherds yeah. where they just, you, you bark a command and they just jump on it. Very uh, much a teenager attitude. Yes, they're going to do <laughs> what they want to do. If what you are asking uh, Align. falls in line with what they wanted to do anyways, <laughs> they might listen to you. But for the most part, uh, you're just gonna have to leave them to their own devices and know that once they're mature, they're gonna make the best decisions uh, to protect the livestock and that's the reason why you got them. Yeah, and that's where the training comes in as well with the bonding of the livestock, especially while they're young, you need to be out there spending time to make sure that they know what they're supposed to protect. Like I said earlier, not every dog can be a livestock guardian dog. It doesn't work that way, but on top of that, not every farm dog can be a livestock guardian dog. And a lot of people just think that all, fire, all farm dogs are livestock guardian dogs. Now with all people we mean, that used to be us too, until yeah. we started doing research. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people think that, uh, an Australian Shepherd would be a good livestock guardian dog because they're farm dogs. They are farm dogs, but they're herding dogs, mm -hmm. and their job is to herd animals. If you, they're really good at it, and they're they're awesome <laughs> at it. But if you put an Australian Shepherd in with your livestock, you run the risk of him just harassing the livestock all day mm -hmm. because that's what he's trained to do is just herd. He wants to herd them, and he's just going to be running circles, running around circles him. around goats and stressing goats all day, and that's not what the goats need. Yeah. And obviously, I can't say that will be the case for every Australian Shepherd. I can't say that's the case for every Australian Shepherd. Every uh, Blue Heeler is not the case. You might be watching this and you might be thinking, I have an Australian cattle dog and he does great <laughs> with my livestock. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about when when you're looking to get one, look at, look at the breed and what the breed is supposed to do. When you're looking to get a dog for a specific job, look up the ones that are bred for it. Yeah, a lot of people think I can get a German Shepherd as a livestock guardian dog. They're really smart. They're, they're guard they dogs, but they, they like to guard people and property. They don't care about your livestock. They're really smart they and are. a really smart dog left in a field all day by itself with no stimulation is not going to end well. It's going to be mischievous. It needs to, uh, a German Shepherd. Those smarter breed dogs have to be stimulated where our livestock guardian dogs are completely happy just laying around all day long <laughs> waiting for something to go bump in the night. A yeah. German Shepherd's not going to do that for you. It's going to be looking to do something and if you're not giving it something to do right now it's going to find its own things to do. So I can't stress that enough. If you're looking for a livestock guardian, get a livestock guardian. Mm -hmm. Then if that's what you're looking for then you need to get a livestock guardian yeah. dog another dog might you're gonna get another dog and it just might not do what you're wanting to do and then and you're it's in not a situation, the dog's fault yeah and then you're in a situation where i've got this dog that i bought for this specific job and it's not doing that job and now i gotta fire this dog but the dog's part of the family and now i have guilt right don't put yourself in that position is <laughs> all i'm saying get a livestock guardian dog to guard your livestock This is what's worked out for us. We haven't had a single predator issue since we've been out here. N nothing. We've, nothing. We've been lucky. They've done an amazing job for us. Is this the only way that you can protect livestock? It's not. There's other ways to do it, but this is what has worked for us. Mm -hmm. So find a way that works for you. For us, our dogs have done an amazing job and we definitely 
highly recommend those breeds to anybody who's looking to add a livestock guardian to their homestead. This is what's worked amazing for us. You tell us what you do. We'd love to hear from you and we always are open to learn new ways on how to effectively work on our homestead. So we'd love to hear from you. That's all we got guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.